Hi. So I did create my own leggings, starting from a hand-painted illustration that I did on paper, which I scanned and put in Photoshop and made a digital repeat. And that is what I'm going to teach you how to do today. Now, if you're not interested in learning repeats, totally fine. You can buy my leggings ready-made by me in the link in the bio below. But if you are interested, I'm really proud to share with you a technique I designed myself to make these custom repeats in Photoshop. So when I was learning how to make repeats myself, I went on YouTube and I found a bunch of tutorials, but these tutorials created what I call sloppy repeats. So you have your tile, but when you go to print it and repeat it on a fabric, you can actually see a line of pixels missing because your design doesn't match up perfectly. So my technique matches the design to the very pixel, but it does it in a very fast way in a series of keyboard commands that I'm gonna lay out for you. So let's get started. We're gonna do a little bit of quick painting, speed through that, and then get into the nitty gritty in Photoshop. If you have any questions at all, please do ask me in the comments below because I will reply to you, and I would love your feedback as well. And other than that, I look forward to seeing what you make with, you, with this process. So now my painting is scanned and in Photoshop. I'm going to add a new layer that I'm making pink behind the original scan. I'm going to select the white space with the magic wand tool, press delete, and then clean up smaller areas that I missed also with the magic wand tool. I can clean up rough edges with the eraser tool. I'm going to create a new document 50 by 50 with 300 resolution. And I draw a rectangle that I also make pink that will be the boundary of my print tile that I'm going to be making. Then I simply drag my motif into the new document and I can position it and scale it as I wish. Then this is the fun part. I can add a bunch of other motifs that I've previously created, um, other paintings that I've done that are already ready to be layered to make my new digital print. I can alter motifs. Here I'm going to add a bud to an empty stem. I'm going to circle the bud that I wish to duplicate with the lasso tool and press Ctrl J. Then I have a second bud that I can move as I wish. Now that I have a motif that I like, I'm going to select the entire motif and duplicate it with Ctrl J and transform it. Then I'm actually going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal to make a motif that looks like a mirrored effect. I'm going to start to fill in the empty space between the two motifs. Here I'm going to duplicate a flower, but I'm not happy that it's so close to the original flower. So I'm going to flip it horizontally and delete certain aspects of it. Then I'm going to add the new additions to the other side. Now that I have the beginnings of a repeat tile that I like, I'm going to resize and rescale the boundary box, which is the pink rectangle of this print tile, so that the overlap is going to happen in a much tighter way and there won't be empty space. Okay, so let's pause for a second and discuss the concept of making a repeat tile. The entire design has to be perfectly encapsulated within the boundaries of the pink box. So the left and right sides of the pink box have to match perfectly with each other to form a continuous design. And the top and bottom of the box have to match perfectly as well. So what we need to do is cut any elements of the design that are outside of the boundary box and move them to the opposite side within the boundary box. So my trick to do this is to select the boundary box itself by pressing Ctrl D and clicking on the layer that has the rectangle in it. Then I will click on the layer that has the element that I wish to move and press Shift Ctrl I, which gives you the inverse selection. Therefore, I'm selecting what is outside of the pink rectangle. Then I will press Ctrl Shift J, which will copy the contents of that selection into its own new layer and remove it from the previous layer. Then I basically just need to move this little piece that I've cut out. So it's very simple. While holding down Shift the entire time, I just drag it up until it's at the top of the pink rectangle. Then I can zoom in all the way to the very pixel level itself and make sure that it's lining up exactly with the top line of pixels of the rectangle. So now I just have to repeat this process for everything that's outside of the rectangle. Control D to select the rectangle, shift Control I to do the inverse selection of the area outside, click on the element you wish to move, Control shift J to copy that selection into a new layer and move it while holding down shift. Remember to zoom in to check that it's lined up with the outside edge of the rectangle and you can see here it's too far, I had to move it back. So here actually what I've moved over is too much, it's overlapping too much with the design that's already there. So I'm going to 
erase parts of this new move, which is why it's important that it's in a different layer. And now I'm going to modify that part of the original design by selecting the bud and moving it further in using the transform tool. And now I'm going to move one last overlapping leaf following the same steps. I think this is a good time to check the overall look of the pattern. So I'm going to select again the rectangle, control D and select the rectangle, and that will be the entire area. And then I'm going to go simply to edit, define pattern. Then I can go to layer, new fill layer, and choose pattern. And the pattern that I've just defined will automatically fill the entire layer. So I think this looks really nice. It has a good flow to it, but there are some empty areas that I find jarring. So I'm going to go back to editing my original tile a little bit more. So I'm going to cut different small elements from other parts of my design to fill this empty space. I'm a big fan of using elements which are already found within the design, but I always rotate scale and transform them, or I delete parts or add parts to change the look. So this is the very last step. The repeat tile is done and I'm going to cheat a little bit and merge all my layers. This will help me clean up all the overhanging bits an entire side at a time. So I only have to do this process four times. So I'm following the steps that I did before where I'm selecting the rectangle, then doing the inverse selection. And then I'm using the lasso tool to deselect the three sides that I'm not interested in so that I can move each side on its own. So I do this for the other three sides, which I'm not going to show. And then I have my final print tile. I'm going to select the rectangle area, which is my entire design now, and I'm going to choose Edit Define Pattern. Then as before, I will choose Layer, New Fill Layer Pattern, and it will automatically fill the entire space with the pattern that I just defined. I can also choose the scale at which this pattern fills the area. Each repeat tile can be very small, leading to a more dense pattern, or very large. I really enjoy at the end of all this hard work to zoom in and see the amazing painterly quality of my original art is still preserved thanks to my Epson V600 scanner. Now it's time to play and make something fun. So I'm going to make these yoga leggings from Printful and all I need to do is upload my print tile, scale it to the size that I wish on the leggings and then press the pattern button on Printful's website. The work has already been done in Photoshop so Printful will tile this perfectly. And then in a few days you have a beautiful pair of leggings to enjoy or to sell. Thank you.